Well, hello everybody and welcome back. It is Jeff again coming to you with Minecraft from the Minecraft Vanilla server. And since the last episode, I have gotten new villagers up top. I forgot completely that you could turn zombie, you know, villagers into <laughs> villagers. I've never done it before, so I went and made some weakness potions, some golden apples, and it took me three villagers before I finally got one of them that was able to act as a farmer. So we got a farmer down here as well as a, uh, a butcher, I believe, in here. They're kind of doing their thing. The problem is, I definitely, something's definitely wrong with the setup. I put a lid on it because I didn't want uh, more zombies getting in there. But something's definitely wrong with the setup because I AFK'd here uh, to let the iron farm work as well as watch this for about 14 hours and I do not have a single extra villager. Now that being said, my point of getting the villager breeding working again was so I could make sure I didn't, you know, we didn't run out of villagers over here, maybe get some more villagers up top to get, you know, more iron going or whatnot. I don't know if it works, if it needs more villagers or not. But either way, the whole point of this excursion in the first place was to get iron. And iron, we have. I AFK'd here for long enough that this isn't all. I took myself this. I made 64 blocks of iron from the iron that was in there, as well as it's just still collecting while we're on. So I think my iron issues are currently sorted. And they will be in the future because we can always go back to the iron farm and get more iron. So iron, no longer an issue. One of the things I needed the iron for is I need to go make myself some shears. I have some shears, um, but I need to make sure I have enough shears. I can make new weapons, armor, this, that, the other, because I don't know how my armor is doing. I keep taking really big falls off of tall places and tall buildings, but we can head back over to the house and go check out my shearing needs because wool, wool and snow are the big things right now that are going to, uh, are stopping us from being able to venture out at the current moment to go find a setup. Sorry guys, I just hit you with the wrong button. I'm pretty sure reds and blacks, and there goes those. I'm pretty sure reds and blacks are all I'm gonna need. I just need to get a lot of them, so I need to make sure I stay up on, on that. I left some of my stuff over at Doc's place, I just realized in uh, one of the chests there. I basically made that my home for the past couple days. Pretty much been there and nowhere else. I. I AFK'd for a very long time, but I spent a lot of time actually on the server doing work. And it's unfortunate because I didn't tape, I didn't record any of it because it was, you know, just me doing work. Nothing exciting, I mean, not that I'm doing anything exciting now, but I finally figured I was at a point where I could bring you guys back in to uh, make this a little bit, a little bit better of a video because I have some things accomplished. Well, damn you! He like, I didn't know that they would use, oh no, he came up on the melon. Okay. I was like, I didn't know that they would use that stuff, but uh, I guess he did. He wanted to, so let's go get some of this stuff put away. <laughs> Hi, kitty. That cat cracks me up because it just, it seems to arbitrarily stand. The cats and the dogs both, it is arbitrarily will stand up and... You know, move if I get hit or if there's enemies around or something. Like I, I don't, I don't quite get it all. But either way, I'm gonna go put this iron in the iron spot down here. Bam! Oh, it feels so good to have all that iron. And I need to start some chests over here, specifically for the collecting of everything I have. So here's my snow chest thus far. This is gonna become my iron and wool chest. So let me get all my iron and wool out of here, just so I can keep track of, I don't, I don't even know how much I need. Like, that's part of the problem, is I need to really sit down and try to try to count this out and see what I'm going to need of this wool. I'm probably going to need, like, full chests of both. I would, I would almost guess, but I don't think it's going to take that terribly long to get there, but that's what we have so far. We have all this snow. Um, I definitely need more snow. What did I figure out? I need 256 stacks of snow and each one of these chests holds what one two three four five six one two three four five six seven eight nine so 54 stacks i need 
five, essentially five double chests full of snow. That is a lot of snow to have to venture out with, and it's going to take multiple trips to do so. One thing I don't actually have is a good setup for a tree farm. I don't, do I? I don't think so. Hold on, let me get some of this stuff. Put away out of my inventory. We're going to grab some saplings out somewhere. I need to get some of this stuff uh, actually put away. Gold. Smelt some more gold. Some of this important stuff can just kind of kind of sit around. Uh, my rails and such. I don't remember which one of these I actually had rails in, but I still have a... It's this one that's marked Birchwood right now. So... I haven't come through and fixed a lot of these markings yet. Like, we still got a lot of problems, but either way, we're working on this. So, while I get some stuff together to go start working on getting a tree farm set up, because I'm going to need more wood, make the double chests and things like that, I really don't feel like going and just, like, busting down snow all day today, so that's not what's in the plan. But, I still figure, as always, good stories. Something to say. So, I was at the... Or, I went to a happy hour the other day, and... I gotta tell you, Julia and I's, I mean, the, the concepts of happy hour, I think were, were pretty much the same is, but what she considers a place that she wants to go to, like, she'll tell me, she, she wrote me when I was at work and said, hey, you want to go to, she said it just like that, she was, hey, hey, no, she said, uh, hey, do you want to go to a happy hour tonight after work? And I was like, yeah, sounds good, I haven't been a happy hour in a while, let's go someplace that's, uh, you know, we can go get some cheap drinks, some food, all that fun stuff. It'll be it'll be a good time because I like myself some happy hour. And she said, okay. Oops, I don't even need this. I have all this up here. Um, she says, okay, I will, you know, find a spot that we can go to and let you know where. So then she writes me and tells me a spot, which is kind of on my way home from work, but still a little bit out of the way. And she was at work as well, so I was like, okay, this must be kind of close, like in between or, or something like that. We'll, you know, we'll meet up and go get happy hour someplace where it's easy for both of us to drive to. And so, oh, Jesus. I so didn't even, like, pay attention. Maybe he just wanted the chest to be opened again. <laughs> I don't know. Freaking creepers, man. Freaking creepers. Why are these guys? Why are there multiple of you guys sitting in here? Give me your ender pearls. So, she calls me and says, Okay, I'm at home. Got home early. Um, I'm going to lay down and take a nap because she was working the night the night shift as, uh, as well at the hospital. And I said, Well, if you're at home, why do we have to, let's not go to a happy hour that's going to involve you driving out of the house. I'd rather go to a happy hour, you know, by our house anyway. So let's just, let's plan for that instead. She says, well, okay, uh, I guess I really want to check this place out, but, you know, you're right, I am home. Let's go someplace, like, closer, someplace, you know, easier for us to get to from home. Because, especially with happy hours and stuff, I'd rather come home, drop my stuff off, and just walk to a happy hour. We live so close to all these places, like so many happy hour bars, that there's no point in us trying to drive somewhere. Let's walk to a happy hour, and then we can, like, if we decide we want more than, like, a drink or two or something like that. Like, if we are just having a rough week and want to stay there for a while and just indulge in the, in the you know, the cheaper priced beers, let's do that. So, she picks this place because... She heard about about it being pretty good from a friend of hers. Oh, I don't know where I'm going. So I'm like, okay, that's fine. Like, we'll check this place out. Whatever this place is that you heard is, you know, is pretty good. I guess we can, you know, check that out. And then it turns out that she's like, yeah, their specialties are all these wines and pastas. And I said, this doesn't sound exactly like a happy hour place to me. It sounds, you know, more like a, a fancy you know, restaurant, if they specialize in pasta and wine, I'm not thinking this is going to be one of those places I, I'm imagining in my head right now for happy hour. She's like, well, no, 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 you know, you know, so-and-so said that it was great. Let's go check it out. That They have really good happy hour specials. And I said, okay, okay, whatever. We'll, we'll go check this place out. But, you know, <laughs> know that... That took forever. But I was like, know that, you know, I, I'm putting out there my concerns for the choice of where we're going for happy hour. And, of course, we walk 
It's a relatively far walk, but no big deal. It was a nice day. So we walk over to this place and it, my concerns, like I could tell like from the outside of the restaurant, not only did I look inside and the place was absolutely empty. It, there was not a single person in this, in this restaurant. It was so upscale looking just from like the outside of the door and i'm pretty sure that's why nobody was there at like you know five o'clock in the afternoon because nobody's there going for their fancy upscale dinners at that point there people are out looking for happy hours and this was just a place that was like super super upscale and i was like i yeah let's not go here let's go somewhere else and she's like well no we're already over here like, you know let's go check it out and let's go let's go inside at least and look at the menu and i'm like you can look at the menu right here i can i can see it from the you know at the door like it's one of those ones that has the menu most places in dc fancy not fancy doesn't matter you have uh the menus are on the door so that you can you're walking down the street because it, get, it gets a lot of street traffic that way because you just have a restaurant in an area that people are walking in on a regular basis and you put your menu on the door people are like oh what do they serve oh that looks good let's go in and i will admit their menu looked good because it was like these fancy like pasta and mussels and like all these like expensive like the cheapest dish on the menu was like 25 dollars. like this is not a place that i would you know consider you know a typical happy hour joint granted you can get lucky sometimes and get those really expensive restaurants that have uh, these amazing happy hours and they'll have like little starters of some of their more expensive dish for like a, a reasonable happy hour price you know obviously much less of than a, than a full entree but so you can get lucky and have that happen I, i'm not i'm not doubting that but it was very clear that there was no uh no real good happy hour going on at this place and for one this place they, they literally had a sign maybe it was six o'clock at this point because it was just after six because they had a sign that literally said happy hour five to six who does a happy hour like literally i, I understand the terminology is an hour um happy hour quote unquote nobody has a happy hour that goes for one hour like i even get more ups uh, upset with the places that have the happy hours are five to seven because a lot of times i'm getting to one of those places at like seven or seven thirty but i think that's you know that's what they're trying to avoid is they want happy the hour to end so that they can start charging like more you know more expensive prices for their stuff again but i like to find the happy hours that go until eight like the longer ones because then i can go and not feel rushed because you always feel rushed when you're at a happy hour to, to just order another drink just because happy hour is about to end whether you need it whether you want it no, it doesn't matter you just you feel obligated to order it because of the fact that happy hour is about to end you better get in there and get in on this you know on this special like i feel like i'm missing out it's, it's fomo Fear of missing out. If I don't get in now, I will never get in. Therefore, I will feel sad that I could have gotten more cheap drinks. So, anyways, we go inside, and she's like, okay, let's just grab one drink and go. And I'm like, what's the point? Like, why, why, why are we even going to grab a drink and go? Like, nothing on here is cheap. There's not even happy hour prices. Like, their happy hour prices was, there was a, a Guinness for $6. So they didn't have beers on tap. I didn't know this. But it said, you know, happy hour, there was a couple beers, and one of them was Guinness, and it was $6 for the happy hour, which is not cheap, but I mean, it's not crazy expensive. So I, I ordered the Guinness, so I'll take the Guinness. So the Guinness comes, what I didn't know, it's a bottle of Guinness. I'm a big draft guy. I prefer draft over anything, like, give me draft over a bottle any day. But, so it was like a 12-ounce bottle of Guinness, and I was like, okay, whatever, we'll just drink this, and we'll go on and go somewhere else. And he brings me a glass with it. The, the waiter brings me a glass with it. Now, I've never experienced this before in my life, but i am started to drink the glass, and I drink about the top, like, you know, two inches out of this uh, glass. So there's still like half the bottle or half the beer is still in the bottle and half of it's in this glass. And the guy poured it for me too. So I didn't even like pour it myself. And as I tipped the glass back, I noticed something in on the top of the glass that so, so I tipped the glass backwards like this. And I noticed at the top of the glass, now that the beer's on the bottom, that something looked like, it looked like there was a chip in the glass or something like that. And I was like, I glanced at it for a minute and I turned it back and put it on the table and looked at it again. And I tapped the glass and I said, Julia, I think there is a super long hair in my beer. And she looks at it and she goes, yeah, that does look like a hair. So I reached in and I physically moved it. So it was a hair and it was a super long hair. It was like, it went, uh, it was like curled around and went like down the entire glass. It looked like it was a big chip until I realized it, you know, it could move. And I was like, I'm not the one to normally 
I can't say not care about things like that because it's unsanitary, but I'm not usually like, oh my god, there's a hair in my food, must send it back and demand everything for free and this, that, the other. No, dude, whatever, there's hair in your food. I usually just move it to the side because I really just don't care. Um, I'll let those guys grow for now. But I was already a little upset with this place, and it had nothing to do with this place. It was just the fact that it was not the place that I wanted to be at anyways, and now I'm getting this, like, experience happening, so... I just looked at the guy, the waiter, and I said, excuse me, sir, uh, there's a, a glass, or a hair here in my glass. And he looked at it, and he goes, oh, yeah, there is. And he started, he took it and started to walk away from the table. So in the meantime, I just got the bottle. There's like half the beer still left in the bottle, so I'm just drinking from the bottle, not a big deal. And I hear the guy behind me say something to one of his colleagues, like, hey, I need a new glass. And at that point, I was like, you, this isn't going to go down the way that I think it's about to go down, is it? And about two minutes later, the guy comes back to the table and he puts a glass in front of me with beer in it and about half of its head. So foam at the top of the beer glass is what's going on. And it's because he literally took the glass of beer that I had and then just poured it into the new glass of beer that he attained. So not only do they have this, like, I have this tainted beer that I'm sending back, but the guy, the way the guy thinks is appropriate, and you could tell, like, he thought it was absolutely appropriate for him to... I'll still open, right? Yeah, I'll still open. He thought it was absolutely appropriate for him to treat it that way you could you could just you could absolutely tell that's what he thought and actually let's do I should move all these around um that that was fine and i just looked at him when he set it back down and i i, I mean i just stone cold face i'm just like sir this is not acceptable this is this is not going to be like okay with me and he was like okay and I just drank the rest of what was in the bottle, and we asked for our check, and we were... We, oh, I, can't, I can't get into that one, huh? And we left. They, now, they did come out and end up giving us the whole thing for free, which were, turned out good because Julia's cocktail that she got was a, an $11 cocktail on happy hour, apparently, which was, you know, that's a little bit ridiculous and expensive, but, you know, what are, what are you going to do? We, we, don't, we don't run the prices there. It's, uh, you know, we're at the mercy of... Of what they want, not what we want. So, either way, I just could not believe... I worked in the restaurant industry for a very, very, very long time. The concept that somebody can think that it's acceptable to hand you a glass... I, I mean, I, it, I can't say... To fix a problem with the fact that you had a hair in your glass... By literally just replacing the glass and pouring the contents of the, the tainted glass back into your brand new glass. It's like if you sent back to the kitchen your food because you found a hair in your food and they thought it was okay. And I don't even mean that because I'm sure this happens in the restaurant industry all the time. People know that it's not okay, but they're just going to do it anyway. But their way that they fixed it in the back was all they did was pull out the piece of hair and send the food back or scoop out like a little chunk of where that hair came from in the first place and like, you know, send it back to you with like just a little divot in your, uh, in, in your glass or in your, uh, plate or something like that. I mean, that's, a, that's a, essentially what it would be the same as it'd be doing that, which I find crazy that anybody can possibly think is okay. And especially, I mean, that's something you expect from the traditional happy hour bar that, you know, I prefer to hang out at because it's, you know, the low scale, you know, cheap bars as opposed to a place like, oh, I should get, uh, depending if I want to patch that with the snow. I do, I do. I got to go spend so much time getting snow that I might as well make the lawn look somewhat pretty right now. Uh, but... This is an upscale place with like the cheapest food item on the menu being $25. And you can't tell me that your customer service skills are telling you that that's an acceptable thing to do. I mean, that's the type of stuff that baffles me. I love watching food shows on TV. And 
what some of the chefs do and think is acceptable and they usually get called out for it on this by like hosts and things like that but it's like when they're when they're doing their tastings and they're going through a tasting you're supposed to have a tasting spoon you can't just use the same spoon that you're like you're mixing your ingredients with taste off of it and then put it back in the pot and you know keep stirring granted people do that all the time i i'm not going to sit here and be naive and think that they don't however that's not the way it's supposed to be done and people know that it's some people think that they're a higher up chef than you are like so you what they do is right and what you think they're doing wrong is not it's just a matter of hygiene and you know protecting other people like what what if you have uh cold sores in your mouth what if you have something uh you know hepatitis that's contagious um you know some of the foodborne hepatitis is like hep a hep b i think hep a is foodborne and like fecal oral route is how they're spread what if you have one of those it, you know it's probably not going to kill people those i mean those things you can get you know cured because they're they're but they can make they, it's just ah it just baffles me that people think that things like that are okay, especially the high class places. I feel that I got such an interesting and well-rounded training in serve safety at McDonald's. Maybe it's because they just, because of the nature of what their organization is, that they need to make sure they're, you know, following the, the letter of the law because they're a huge corporation and that makes them do things better as opposed to these like chefs that are, you know, on their own and run their own restaurants and things like that. I don't know. But yeah. I don't know if you guys have ever had an experience where somebody, when you send the food back and pretty much they send it right back to you, telling you that they fixed it, I, it just <laughs> baffles me. I, I was shocked. I didn't think that was possibly going to happen at this establishment. And sure enough, that is what happened. But anyways, share my story with you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hit that like button. It really helps me out. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Helps me out a great deal for uh, people to subscribe. And other than that... Still just getting preparations in for the journey, and I will see you guys next time.